This is Reformation Sunday, when Presbyterians all over the world remember the 16th century birth of the Presbyterian Church in Scotland. Well, today we're going to reach a little further back, back to the godfather of Presbyterianism, to John Calvin. So I thought in honor of John Calvin, I'd get dressed up a little bit and I'd preach from a pulpit. Our sanctuary is full of school books and pens and pencils and crayons and computers and desks and chairs. Since Summergate School is using Portalhurst Hall, so I'm preaching from another church. Now Calvin would have preferred a big, huge pulpit that sat way up above everybody but I'm gonna use something a little smaller. You'll notice that there is no, no artwork, no paintings, no statues, no ornamentations. Calvin thought that anything that would distract you from hearing the word of God was bad. So he stripped all the cathedrals of all that stuff. All you could see was the gray stone walls. So you could concentrate on the Word of God. He did like music, though, so we filled our service with music from the 16th century. So who was this guy? Who was John Calvin? Well, Martin Luther started the Reformation in 1517 by nailing his complaints to a church door. Not a bad way to get attention. He eventually started the German Lutheran Church, which became the United States Lutheran Church. Calvin had a much longer reach. Watching me on YouTube is a direct result of his theology. And soon, sitting around your kitchen table or in your living room watching the election results on TV will be a direct result of John Calvin's revolution. But more on this stuff later. Calvin has gotten a bad rap. Maybe you've heard it. People cringe at his name, but really that's Calvinism. His followers over the centuries, they, they are the ones that deserve criticism. For example, to be a Christian, they used to say, well, they still say, you had to believe that we were totally, hopelessly depraved. And we were either elected, chosen by God, or not. You were chosen either to go to heaven or not. Period. That's it. Of course, those who believe this, those who teach this, always consider themselves among the elite. But that's just, that's not what Calvin said. So let's look at back, let's look back at Cal, what, what he actually said. And see if you recognize anything from his beliefs. The cornerstone of Calvin was his belief in a God that was made up of three equal, integrated, individual parts, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You see, God has created a family. We have a father, a son, Christ, who is like a big brother, and the Spirit, which is God within us. Much as the parents love within a child, not surprisingly, the people of the 16th century didn't use gender-neutral language, so we use father and son. God is not a concept that we can discuss. It's not an idea in your head. To Calvin, we can experience a personal, passionate relationship with God. Calvin believed that we are, we human beings are imperfect beings, lost in sin and lost in selfishness, kind of lost. And as flawed human beings, we're estranged from God. So how do we get right with God? Not by doing good deeds, not by following the law or rules, not by praying our way into heaven or paying our way in, which was a practice of the medieval church, and not by doing what the priest says. We are justified by faith. We are made whole and forgiven and put right with God, put right in a right relationship with God only by faith. 
So through God's mercy, God has showered us with grace, which is the gift of God's favor. And to this unmerited, undeserved grace, we respond with faith. And this faith is the work of the Holy Spirit, which is God at work within us. But to Calvin, we can't figure this out by ourselves. We need to have someone who has walked with us on earth and experienced what we experience and walked alongside us to show us the way. And that was Jesus. Thus, Jesus is our guide to the understanding how to respond in faith to this grace that has showered down upon us. But, well, today, in the 21st century, we have a problem. That's the same problem that Calvin had 450 years ago. We cannot physically experience Jesus walking alongside us, physically guiding us. I suppose we could sit around and wait for the second coming of Jesus, but Calvin wasn't a big fan of that plan. No. See, Calvin was living 100 years after the invention of the printing press. Before the printing press, books were like they were copied by hand, each book. And only the elite had books, and only the church had Bibles. People in the pews didn't have Bibles. So early on, the church became structured so that the Word of God came through the strict scriptures to the priests who would then deliver the Word of God to you. In 1400, 1300, this made a lot of sense. But in 1540, it didn't, because people now had access to the scriptures. One of those steps could then be eliminated. Priests weren't necessary. Now the word of God came directly to us through the scripture. 